Jones, also known as Jonesy. I'm an Atlanta-based muralist and fine artist, and my studio practice focuses on introspective, figurative work. It's usually um, highly focused on lighting, pose, sometimes topics of sexual identity and other things that I might be processing. My outward facing artwork, my public art, um, my murals are typically vibrant colors, patterns. I often use a lot of floral images or plant life images in that work, but sometimes there can be figurative pieces to those murals as well. I approach this process um, starting out with research. A lot of times my work uh, with this project and other, other pieces that I do, there's a lot of background work that goes unseen. And one of those things has to do with photography. And since, of course, I can't take any photos of Sophie, I went ahead and looked at the ones that were pre-existing. And I was very intentional about the choice and the photograph that I picked of her. Um, one, because it had a very androgynous feel to it. Um, she was seated in kind of a comfortable position reading, which to me gives this really like a strong sort of quiet strength uh, about her, which resonates with the story of the White Rose in general, an intelligence group, you know, like intellectual group that had um, really focused on nonviolent ways of communicating uprooting the suppression um, that the Nazis were doing in, in Germany at the time. Um, so this is her seated right here, reading. Um, and I also feel like the very stern look on her face is interesting too, so that's why I chose that. Sophie had been a story that I had known about years prior to this project actually, so I wasn't unfamiliar with who she was or, or what she did during that time. But what I didn't really know much about were these pages that they distributed. And so my research was really focused on that and finding all of those leaflets, doing some of my own uh, translation of the German language to find some similarities throughout each one of those six leaflets. And one of the words that kept standing out was freedom. And so that's why you actually see it in German repeated multiple times in my painting. Um, I also chose to enlarge the leaflets and leave them in their original state for several reasons. One, I think it's important, important to keep the the German language is a part of this piece, but also it's interesting to me to see the mark making that the typewriter actually made during that time. It's, this is like historical documentation of like a moment in time, which I find very interesting. All of these, you know, decisions that I made when creating this painting are super intentional. One of those things is the color choice. Um, so I really was drawn to the idea of focusing on the leaflets, specifically the, the mark making that a typewriter actually creates. Um, and so this is why you see a lot of this um, different sized pasted on collage work in the background. And the color choice, I stayed with kind of a black and gray color scheme, mainly because that's what you would see in newsprint or you would see in uh, leaflets. And these hues of purple that you may be able to see in the frame are actually intentional as well because black ink sometimes has like a little bit of a purple tint to it. And I wanted to soften things up so it wasn't quite so dark and just black and white. Um, and that's, that's basically why I went with purple. Uh, I think that the, the one thing I did learn about Sophie during this process that I wasn't really familiar with had more to do with uh, right before her execution um, and the choice that she made there to actually take that on and not take a lesser sentence. Uh, for some reason, I, I never really knew that piece of her story, and I think that that's a defining moment to show just exactly like how strong she was at 21 years old. That's absolutely incredible to be that devoted to uh, justice and to what feels right to you in that moment. One of the things that um, in, in my own life, 
I realize that each one of us, you know, no matter where we think we are, how much power we have or we don't have, like each one of us makes a difference. Um, and I've seen that, you know, throughout my, my, my own life. And we all, whatever we do, we all can initiate change. I think it's difficult for individuals sometimes to stand up uh, because of fear. I mean, most humans live in fear about things that are not as ominous as like what the Nazis were doing. Like, you know, live in fear about more simple things even, you know, like every day. So like dealing with that, um, I think the apathy maybe that came out was more uh, about just trying to survive the situation. And that may look different for all different types of people. Some people may have stood up, some people might have just been apathetic, and some people may have actually joined the Nazi party where maybe that wasn't really their belief system, you know, but it was the thing they could do to save their family, save themselves. Um, I'd say over the last six years, uh, here in the United States especially, we've seen some things that really actually for me, look like a Nazi playbook. Uh, you know, if we look at history repeating itself. Um, and so I think that sometimes fascism and authoritative, like governments, they sneak up on you. I have seen apathy regarding really horrific events that have happened within the last six years or so mm -hmm. around race, around other other topics too. Mm -hmm. Apathy does lead to that because really the people that show up are the ones that make history. I mean if we don't show up for what we believe in it just opens the door to allow those that have belief systems that really impact masses take over, right? So I think it's important not to be apathetic about things that matter um, and you know, even if it doesn't directly impact my life, if it impacts other people in a way that, sh that shows oppression, um, I still have to stand up for, you know, for trying to uproot that and keep it visible. Um, you know, because once again, we all have like a, a part in this. And if we step out and we're apathetic, we are playing a part and we're just allowing others to take control. If we don't have any kind of sense of justice or what's right in the world and try to try to like hold space for that like it does just kind of lend to like chaos um, you know like if we don't do something and we just turn our shoulder to it and pretend like it doesn't exist then it's going to be left to the people that just don't don't give a damn basically you know and so yeah so i think that that Maybe also if we think about the time frame too, right? When she was saying that in the 1940s or whenever, you know, she said that probably 1942 or three, right? Um, yeah, that there might have been definitely a different social standard that was happening in that time. And so criminals and drunks might just be an overarching term for it's just gonna go to hell, like, <laughs> and left in the hands of people that don't don't care about order, you know, or justice. I think that, you know, so I'm a part of a, an artist um, slash social justice uh, organization called Alternate Roots. And some of the work that we do outside of, you know, the art that I create is, is working through really hard, challenging, um, problem solving and uprooting things within ourselves too, especially as a white woman, like having to really focus on some hard topics and living in the South, uh, you know, specifically around racism, which is, you know, threaded through our whole entire society here in the United States. It's just, you know, we can't get away from it. It is based in all of our institutional structures. So one point you want to do something, but like, I think that with the with passive resistance, just kind of like with with her story and her brother's story, Hans. I mean, it ended, you know, and then being executed, right? But I think that the we're seeing, I and mean, we're still talking about this story. Like this is still present, right? Almost one hundred and one years, like 
past her birth, you know, that's so like 80 years past the time she died, basically, give or take. And that's incredible to like, know that a story can like, carry on and be that present. I think it's important too, because we don't want to forget those things that happen or like, be apathetic to that history, because it will inevitably repeat itself somewhere if we are apathetic to things that happen in, in history. So I think that passive resistance, looking at like the civil, right, the civil rights movement, looking at really some of the pieces of, you know, uh, the queer movement, which is closer to, to my heart because I am a queer identifying person. But you know, things like that, there are elements in each one of those that were not so passive because I think up to a certain point, I think passive resistance is the way to go. But, you know, I'm not opposed to the alternative of that too, if it's needed in order to, you know, shake things up and make things right. But like, it's definitely, I think passive resistance is much more appealing to me when I think about justice work. So something I, I really feel strongly about is, and this does align with the passive resistance piece is the power of word. Um, and so, you know, we started this thing out with me saying who I am, right? And I think that I am statement, and then whatever comes after that, it, you're embodying that, right? So, you know, if, if, if I say something, I really mean it after that I am statement. And so I'm intentional about that, but just the power of words visually even, um, not just hearing them, but seeing them. Um, so something in my murals that a lot of people don't know, there's a lot of unseen elements to my artwork that people don't see, and that's the research, the photography. And also like when I do mural work, I usually have something underneath. Um, so often, well, every single mural I've ever done has had a small heart somewhere in it. Uh, so it's underneath those layers of paint. And I started doing that with my very first mural. And I don't really know what kind of like inspired me to do that. But it was something that I kind of kept going with. And I so I think symbols and words have power and not just when we see them too. I think that the energy of those things exist within the space. And so I want my murals to express a certain thing to the people that view them because once I'm done with it, it no longer belongs to me. It just, it belongs to the world. So, you know, I think that using words, which the white rose, that was really what they were doing. They were, you know, through their language and the way they articulated their messages in these leaflets, um, not only showed that they were highly intelligent and passionate about this, uh, this concern and this cause. Um, but I also think that just having those, you know, that documentation of word too, I think that that's really strong, so. It's not just force that we have to smash or whatever. I think it's, it's also those subtle moments too that are not as noticeable that are not as forceful because that is where it gets under our skin that's where it like you know gets embedded in the way that things work the way that systems work the way that institutions work the way that people think um and i think that subtle brainwashing let's just call it what it is, because I, I can't really see how fascism makes sense to anyone that has a kind heart. Um, you know, I just, I think that we need to also think about the subtle things too, and not just the forced nature of it. Yeah, like microaggressions become habit, and then it's like, right. that's just the way things are. Right, and then we don't even notice it anymore. And I think that that's really where it becomes more scary uh, because when you have something, you know, forced upon you, yeah, of course that's not good, but I feel like it's there, I can see it, 
it's like it's tangible I can fight against that whereas you know if it's subtle sometimes it may go unnoticed unless you are clearly doing your own inner work to like make sure you understand what those subtle things are um, and that's really as as someone living in 2022 uh, like what I see as passive resistance right now is getting out and making my vote count um, doing you know actual work that helps the world be a better place that helps me be a better person a better artist